Hi, I'm George Self. This video is one in a series designed to help with Logisim Evolution Digital Logic Labs. This is Lab 6, Counters. The purpose of this lab is to explore various types of counters in order to determine how they operate. When you've finished with this lab, you will have created a universal counter set up in such a way that a select input can turn this counter into an up counter, a down counter, a decade counter, a ring counter, or a Johnson counter. As it's set up now, the select is at zero, so this is an up counter. I will click the reset uh, input in order to reset this counter and now I'm manually going to activate the clock by simply clicking on it and you'll notice that this counter is counting up. If I select down counter by choosing one again I'll reset it goes it starts at F which is all ones and as I activate the clock it counts down. Counter 3 is a decade counter. I'm sorry, counter 2 is a decade counter. Again I'll reset. A decade counter counts from 0 to 9 and then automatically resets back to 0. So again I will manually activate the clock and notice once we get to 9 it goes back to 0. A ring counter. A ring counter is best understood by watching the probe. In the ring counter, the high bit, the one bit, cycles through each of the positions and then returns. Oh, it's easier to just de uh, demonstrate it than describe. A ring counter is counter number three. I'll reset once more. And watch again the probe and notice how that one bit shifts from left to right through each position. Finally, a Johnson counter. A Johnson counter is similar to a ring counter. However, as the high bit shifts through, then each bit will stay high until finally a low bit shifts through. Again, it's easier to demonstrate to try to describe. Select four is a Johnson counter. I'll reset and again watch the probe output as I activate the clock. Notice each bit position fills with ones and then each bit position fills with zero. You'll be building this universal counter. Let me start now with the student counter, the student starter file. The student starter file has each of these four types of counters, excuse me, each of these five types of counters already built. The purpose is that you can actually play with these counters and figure out how they work. First, I have an asynchronous four bit up counter. Now this is described in our lab manual, but oftentimes a description in a manual is not as clear as actually clicking on the circuit and watching what happens. I'm going to reset the circuit and notice my reset pin is, is tied to the reset input on each of these flip-flops. I've used a data flip-flop, a data latch, a D flip-flop. Now as I activate the clock one time, because the signal goes in on this clock input, this uh, flip-flop goes high. And the high output is then uh, visualized as the least significant bit. And it's important to note in all of the counters in this lab, the least significant bit is the one that's controlled by the flip-flop on the left. The most significant bit by the flip-flop on the right. And that is dealt with in this splitter. All right, let me clock this again. 
On the second clock, this first flip-flop goes low, but the output from this flip-flop, the Q-not output now goes high and is fed into the second flip-flop, which makes that signal go high. The uh, output of this Q-not is fed back into the D input for this uh, first flip-flop, so when we clock again, this one will go high. And we're counting up now to three. You can play with this circuit and go ahead and just clock from one to the next and watch how this high signal ripples through each of these four flip-flops. Because of the way this flip-flop or excuse me, this counter works, this is known as a, a ripple counter. The more technical term is asynchronous because the clock pulse is only applied to the very first flip-flop. The rest of them then are, are triggered off of the inputs, or excuse me, the outputs of the preceding flip-flop. Let's take a look at the down counter. The down counter is very similar to the up counter, except now each succeeding flip-flop is triggered not from the Q not output, but the Q output. I'm going to reset this and notice the reset now actually comes in on the set port, which means all of these flip-flops are now high instead of low. And let's clock this one time. This first clock makes this first uh, flip-flop go low and that's reflected here in a low order bit. The Q not output is fed back in, but the Q output then goes to the next clock. So on the next clock cycle, this flip-flop will go high and that will trigger the next flip-flop. And again, you can watch this signal ripple through this bank of flip-flops and you'll notice as it does, the flip-flops count down. Again, this is an asynchronous 4-bit down counter. The decade counter counts up from 0 to 9 and then automatically resets. The way that works is I've added an OR gate on the reset pin so that now two different signals can reset all of these counters. The first signal is the input reset, like we've seen on the other counters. But this other reset is actually uh, input from the output that's set on the output port. When the low, excuse me, the, uh, the low order, one more time, when the high order bit and this second bit are high, Oh, that would be a binary number 1010, which is 10. Automatically, all of these flip-flops will be reset so that the effect is this counter never reaches 10. I'm going to reset it first and then just clock. Again, it's just a ripple counter going up to 9, 8, nine works just fine on the next count this line will go high this line is already high that will activate this and gate which will reset all of these flip-flops to zero all of that happens in a blink of an eye and now we're we've reset our count back to zero of course a decade counter can be set for any output by changing the inputs of this AND gate. You, ha you can have it count from 0 to 3 or 0 to 9 or whatever. Next is a ring counter. And for the ring counter I've switched around and now I'm using a synchronous circuit instead of asynchronous. With a synchronous counter the clock, or the clock input is applied to every flip-flop. And this clock pulse does not have to ripple through the entire circuit. Every flip-flop gets the clock pulse. So the wiring is just a little bit different. For the ring counter, let me just first reset. We start with a 1 in the low order bit. And we do that through this reset 
going in on the set port of the first flip-flop but the reset port of all of the others now as i activate the clock that one is shifted from the low order to the high order bit again you can take a look at this counter you can play with it and and, f and activate the clock and watch and see what happens to this um, one to this high output as each of these flip-flops is activated finally a Johnson counter and I should point out for the ring counter the output from the last flip-flop goes into the output but it's also fed back into this first flip-flop and that's what makes that high reset back into that low order bit a Johnson counter is very similar to a ring counter as you would expect except in a Johnson counter it's the Q not output that's fed back into that first flip-flop for that reason this is sometimes called a twisted tail counter I'm going to start by resetting this and again I will activate the clock one at a time and you'll see how the flip-flops first all activate then they all deactivate because that twisted tail feedback will cause this low order uh, flip-flop to change only after the high order flip-flop has changed for your lab you're going to have all of these counters already built they're already provided for you you're going to add a new sub circuit called universal where you will place all of these counters in that one circuit then using a multiplexer determine which of those counters will be output good luck with your lab if you run into any roadblocks please let me know i'll be glad to help I'll be seeing you online.